three fold you can have only the finish to start dependency between any two tasks. So let's look at a few examples of how to set these dependencies. I'm just going to go back to my project 2010. So I'm just going to show you a couple of ways. Um, one way of setting dependencies is by making use of the predecessors column. You can see there is a column called predecessors where you idly say um, before this activity starts or finish, what activity should start or finish. In this example, let's say if I say conduct workshop can be started only after identifying stakeholders completed. So I can just go to row 3, the predecessor column, and I can key in the predecessor ID here, which is 2. The moment I enter 2, you are able to see um, the, there is a small highlighting that happens. That is the start date, finish date, the duration of some of the tasks is highlighted. Because these are all the tasks that got impacted because of this recent change. Coming back to the right hand side, you can see my finish is connected to the start of my next activity. Okay? So this is one simple way of doing it. But for a fairly large project, you might one task might have multiple predecessors. Okay? For example, um, let me say my create is also going to have two. And um, let's say my review findings. Okay, my review findings can start only after conducting the workshop and creating the responsibility matrix. So in my predecessor, I should generally say three comma four. But uh, we ideally make some human errors when you key in some numerical values in the predecessor. So we might give a wrong value there. To avoid that, I recommend double click the task review findings on my predecessors tab. You have an option to select multiple predecessors, not by ID alone, but by task name. Here I can say its predecessor is conduct workshop, and the next activity is, is dependent on is creating the um, responsibility matrix. You can see that though the predecessors column does have a numerical value like 2 and 2, you can see by default the dependency type that was set was a finish to start dependency, and that's what you see even in the type column here. There are other dependency types that you can change here, like start to start, finish to finish, and a start to finish. The last one says none. You can just ignore it. The moment you say none and say OK, this dependency will be removed from that particular task. So I'm just going to say finish to start, and let me say OK. So you can see 3 comma 4, and you see a few cells are getting highlighted again. So when you have multiple predecessors or you want to have more confidence in terms of what task I am trying to set predecessor successors, make use of the uh, task information form predecessors tab to set those multiple predecessors here. Another way by which you can set your predecessors is by making use of a drag and drop option. Okay? But you need to be a bit careful in doing it because if you are not used to uh, do drag and drop in using your mouse, I recommend you use your the old approach what I showed you. But let me give you an idea. So let's say after reviewing the findings, I want to submit for approval. So I'm just doing a mouse over on top of my task, that is my review findings. You can see there is a small tooltip that says task is review finding. So I want to say after this task, I want this task to start. So I can just dub, just drag this task. You can see that the moment I uh, click that task and drag it down, you can see there is a small thread coming out of it. I can drop it on top of my review findings. The moment you drop it, it assumes that both are linked by a finish to start dependency. If you want this dependency from finish to start to be changed to start to start, one way is you can double click your approval, where you can just say it is start to start. The second way is, you can double click the link that connects these two tasks here. So on my right hand side on my chart area, double click that link which opens up the task dependency form where I say it is a start to start dependency. The moment you say OK, you can see the dependency type would have changed, the dates would have also got changed, and you can see on your predecessor column, it just does not have 5, but it says 5 SS, which means it is a start to start dependency between those two activities. And uh, let me do the same way. I'm just doing it, dragging it, and dropping it. So as I have already told you, there are many ways, but I'm just giving you only the few simple ways by which you can set dependencies between any two tasks. 
The next requirement you might want to have is uh, you might want to have a wait time or a delay time between two linked activities or you might want to have um, an overlap between two linked activities. On the screen you can see there are two tasks are given, two scenarios. Um, there is a research activity and a review activity. Though the research gets completed on Monday, you might want to have some kind of a buffer time maybe to get people or set up meeting rooms to start the review. So two days you might want to put it as a task in MS project or you might want to uh, hide it maybe because nobody is accountable for it. So you might want to have a wait time in this case. The same two tasks maybe you want to do it the opposite way. You can see that when uh, some research work has been completed you can want to start your review simultaneously. So you can see both these tasks, both of these two are two different scenarios but if you look at the arrow that connects these two, it is still a finish to start dependency. So the dependency type is still finish to start but you want to either have a lag time that is a delay time or you might want to have an overlap time between two tasks. So let's take a few scenarios and see how this can be implemented. So let me also connect these two tasks. And um, and let me connect these two tasks here. Okay, so good. Now I have connected all these activities. You might want to have um, a, a delay time between any two tasks. For example, after identifying the stakeholder, you might want to have one day to review it. How do I do that? So double click your conduct workshop. The moment you double click a conduct workshop, the predecessor's identify stakeholder is listed. You can see there is a small field called lag. By default, the lag is zero days. Lag is called as delay time. By default, the delay is zero. You can either provide a fixed value in the lag or you can give a percentage based value. Let's go by the fixed approach here. I'm just going to say I need a wait time between this task and the second task as one day. And let me say, okay. You can see that uh, between conduct workshop and this, you can see there is a one day delay between it. You can see my identify is getting completed on Monday, whereas my conduct workshop starts only on Wednesday because I have a one day delay time between my identify and conduct. Okay? But instead of going for a lag, you might also want to go for a lead, which means that you want to overlap two tasks. So when you want to put an overlap, you might want to use the same lag column but give a negative value here like minus one day which means your conduct workshop will start one day earlier than the finished date of my identify stakeholders. So let's say okay. You can see there's a one day overlap between identify and conduct which means identify is completing on Monday. On Monday itself my conduct workshop will also parallelly start. So in these two examples what I have done is I have gone by a fixed value which is minus one day or plus one day. But sometimes you might want to go by a, a percentage based value. For example, you might want to say when 80% of my um, identifying stakeholder is complete, I want to start my workshop completed. So I might want to say uh, the lead here is 20%, uh, which means that this particular task, conduct workshop will start when 80% of my identify stakeholders work is completed. So let's say okay. You can see there's a small overlap but this overlap is very very dynamic which means if my identify stakeholders changes to let's say 8 days. So 20 percentage of 8 days that's how the overlap is going to be calculated. Whereas if I say minus 1 day the overlap is always going to be 1 day always. So this is how ideally you might want to uh, set a lag or a lead between any two activities. So just to summarize, this is what I told. Uh, the lag time is generally represented by a positive whereas lead time is represented by a negative value. And you can either provide as a fixed duration or percentage based value. You can either go for the predecessor's column where you can set the lag or you might want to make use of the task dependency form through which you can set the lag or the lead. The final part of uh, today's webinar is you might want to set some constraints between any two activities. So let's talk about constraints in more detail, though I talked about at a very high level earlier. By default, all tasks in Project 2010 will have some constraint. Okay, so when you look at identify stakeholders, okay, 
and uh, let me save this file. Let me double click this particular task. You can see on my advanced tab of identify stakeholders, you can see the constraint type is as soon as possible because I have gone for a forward scheduling. Whereas when I double click my status meeting, on my advanced tab you see the constraint type is start no earlier than. Which means every task can have different constraint types based on your own requirement. To understand how constraints ideally work, the first um, information which I would like to share here is to use this inspect option on your task ribbon so that you can understand how it works. I am now in my contact workshop uh, activity and I am just hitting the inspect button. So you can see my conduct workshop on the left hand side where it says this is the activity and these are the factors that affects this uh, start date and the finish date of this activity which is the predecessor is the only one and the calendar of the project which is standard calendar decides the start date and the finish date of this activity. So what it means is if I go to identify stakeholders and increase its duration by four days you can see my conduct workshop start and finish is going to change accordingly because in my conduct workshop the constraint type is as soon as possible which means the moment my stakeholders are identified immediately my workshop can be started. But there are some times when the customer might say irrespective of how quickly you identify your stakeholders we might want to have the sponsor to be there in the conduct workshop and he will be available only on or after a particular date which means there is an external dependency which you may not have much control over. In those cases, we want to go for what we call as constraints, or a hard constraints here. Let me double click my contact workshop. And you can see on my constraint type, there are eight types available. I'm just giving a few seconds to you. Please go through the values in this drop down. Good. You are able to find there are many options here like as late as possible, as soon as possible, finish no earlier, finish no later, must start on, must finish on, start no earlier and start no later. So you are free to choose any of the constraint types as long as you understand what it implies here. So you, when you say a, a, an activity is scheduled as soon as possible, which means that the moment the earlier activity finishes, it starts as quickly as possible. Whereas when I say as late as possible, this activity will start as late as possible without affecting its successor activity. So as I can say, these two tasks or these two constraint types are flexible constraints. But when you have a fixed date, which means this training can happen only on or after a particular date. You want your uh, conduct workshop to start only on that date, not before or not later. Then you might want to go for must start on your so let's say the customer wants this activity to start only on um, 12th, okay? which means it should start on that date. So there is no flexibility allowed with respect to that activity. But since when you have a must start on, which means if the earlier activity is getting delayed, it, uh, if it uh, gets delayed more than 12th of October, which means your conduct workshop cannot start on this date. So which means your schedule is going to be unrealistic at that point in time. So project will automatically give you an alert because it can it can see that must start on and must finish on and future it might create a scheduling conflict. So please read through this alert. It says you are setting a must start on on a so and so task. This could result in a scheduling conflict now or later. But it will not for us. It will not create any scheduling conflict now because we uh, our. Um, identifying stakeholders is completing on 9th of October itself. But it says you either set no constraints or you go for a bit flexible constraint like start no earlier or you can continue with what you have selected. But let me go with what I selected here that is continue must start on constraint and let me say OK. So the moment I hit OK button you can get the same calendar icon but with a red dot which means that it is a hard constraint. When I say hard constraint, I go to identify stakeholder and I say due to some delay this activity takes 10 days. The moment you take 10 days, naturally identify stakeholders uh, finish date is going to be 17th and you can see this activity is no more realistic. Conduct workshop is still starting on 12th of October whereas my identifying completes only on 17th of October. So when you go for hard constraints, please remember um, you are 
dates will not be automatically adjusted based on the predecessors. So this is how you might want to understand what is hard constraints. There are other constraints available. I will let's say that the customer says maybe you can start the workshop on or after 12th, but he does not say on 12th, on or after 12th. So I just say 12th year and I will say okay. So now currently when I say conduct workshop, you can see on my task inspector it says it is auto scheduled, it's constrained. The task date, task start date and the finish date is more driven by the constraint that is start no earlier than. If my identify stakeholders duration now increases to let's say 10 days, you can see now my conduct workshop uh, is now driven by the predecessor rather than the constraint because naturally my predecessor's finish date is falling after the constraint date which means my predecessor is now respected than the constraint date. So I always recommend that ask yourself if it is a hard or a soft. If it is a hard, always try to minimize it. If it is a soft, always go for other flexible constraints like start no earlier, start no later and others. And most of the times when you try to negotiate with a customer, you might want to, you might end up in removing most of the soft and the hard constraints by just changing the methodology and the way you, in which you are executing your project. Okay. So this is what I just told you, right? So when you start entering start date or finish date, project automatically puts some constraints and you might want to change the constraints.